Black holes, a single point in space with incomprehensible density. Pulling in and consuming everything in its path, even light. But not in this case. Harakdine's new closed-back entry, Black Hole, is an example of mastery in some facets and a failure in others. Let's talk about it. Hey, I'm DMS, you're watching The Headphone Show, and this is my review of the Harmonic Dime Black Hole, the $100 closed back vented headphone. Now, they make a lot of interesting claims on their website about this headphone, about balanced sound, about the ergonomics, so I'm gonna start with building comfort, then we'll move into subjective sound, and then we'll do measurements and frequency response. Before we get too far into this, if you like audio, if you like headphones, if you want more videos like this, drop a subscribe down below to let me know, and I will see you guys in the next one. All right, back to the video. Ergonomics are important, and Harmonic Dine has generally been pretty good at that over the years. The Helios, the Zeus, well, they were really comfortable headphones. And Black Hole, well, it picks up on that in some ways, but also has a couple of faults. These pads are extremely comfortable. The headphone is very light. The clamp is really good. It's not too heavy, but it's not too light either. The headphone itself looks beautiful. I love this pattern on the side of the headband, the exposed metal with the laser engraving. All around, it's just a really good looking headphone. But there's one part that I find uncomfortable, and it's this very top band. Now, it's not any thinner than what's been on Harmonic Dine's headphones in the past, but the foam is softer. Now, at first, you might think, well, that's a good thing, right? And in some ways, yes, but it compresses a lot easier. And as a result, the top of my head ends up touching plastic very quickly. Now, if this foam was either a little bit more firm or if this padding was just a little bit thicker, it would be a lot better. Outside of that, you can see there's vents all the way around the ear cups. So while this is closed back, it's more like a semi-open because this is a lot of open area all the way around. You can straight up see light pass through it, not like an actual black hole. And at the bottom, we have dual entry three and a half millimeter. These do come with an okay cable. It's nothing special, but it's also nothing too bad. I don't feel like it'll be extremely durable, but it also isn't too intrusive. It doesn't have a lot of microphonics for brushing up against your clothes and spreading bassy noise up in your headphones. I'm, I'm not talking about electrical noise or anything like that. I'm talking about literally the cable bumping and you just hearing boom, boom. These are decent about mitigating that. So, okay cable, nothing insane, uh, more than adequate. And I would go so far as to say pretty decent actually for a $100 headphone. And notably better than the things you get with like the AKG K361 and K371. The ear pads are plenty deep, plenty wide, and plenty tall for just about any ear shape that I've ever encountered. And these can also fold flat. But what really matters is how they sound. So let's get into that with subjective sound first, then we'll get into objective sound and frequency response after that. So how do these sound? Ooh. When you think about a black hole, what do you think of? Do you think of something that is very hot and warm? Do you think of something that is very dark because light cannot escape it? Oh, well, that is how I would describe these headphones. Very dark, very warm and unfortunately to a fault. There are parts of it that are pleasant, but there's a lot of parts of it that really just don't feel competitive, especially at this price point. Now, warmth in a headphone can be very pleasant, but in this case, it's very overwhelming. The bass becomes very bloated and boomy, but you really don't get much sub bass. It's all just mid bass. This is a tale I know we've heard time and time again, unfortunately, but it's no exception to that same fault we see time and time again. The sound of this headphone does lend itself to be a bit more spacious, though this is probably more due to its deficits in parts of the frequency range than it is to any actual spatial qualities the headphone has. It really depends on what you're looking for. If you're sensitive to certain regions, you might actually really like this, but for me, the kind of bloated, boomy mid bass is just too much and makes the rest of the headphone just it just sounds sloppy. What's really wild is on their website they say superior sound engineering featuring a 50 millimeter dynamic driver the black hole delivers a relevant and accurate sound profile. I can't tell you how often I see headphones that are listed as having an accurate sound profile when they're just nowhere even remotely near it. I don't know where the line is that makes something like this false advertising but I really feel like this is beyond that. But there's so many things in audio that are just 
really honestly falsely advertise that they can get away with it. Now, that's not saying that Harmonic Dine are bad guys. I've enjoyed some of the headphones they've made in the past, but this is a big miss and calling it accurate just kind of seems oblivious. Like, come on guys, clearly you know this isn't accurate. Market it that way. Tell people this is a big boomy bass headphone and leave it at that. Just be honest, because that's the kind of person that's gonna be happy with this. If you tell someone that they're buying an accurate headphone and this is what they get, they're not gonna be happy with the product. If you tell someone that they're gonna be buying something that's a big, boomy, warm headphone, well, they're gonna get what they expect. And there are people out there who do want that. This is what they'd be looking for. So why not market it that way? Why not be honest? Because otherwise I feel like you're just gonna have a high return rate. And why sell a product that is marketed as something it's not? I mean, people are going to get it and they're gonna find out anyway. It just seems silly to me. Detail-wise, it doesn't actually sound bad. Um, I think that whatever drivers they're using or the way that it's tuned is doing okay for things like detail. It doesn't feel like it's lacking there, but it really does feel so sloppy in the bass that it's just ruining the rest of it for me. Imaging is okay, and it's comfortable enough aside from the top band that I could use it for relatively long sessions, though I didn't want to use it for anything related to music. Sometimes I would use it for gaming and it was okay, especially games that rely more on footsteps in the lower frequencies. It was decent for things like Tarkov, but not so good for stuff like Apex. I know I'm really beating a dead horse, but I wish there were better closebacks out there again and again and again. I just want somebody to make really good affordable closebacks, and there are some. I recently made a video about the Sony CD900ST, and I've talked about these also, the 7506, the MDR-V6, all with different pads on them. There's some good stuff out there, the K361, K371, but I would really love something that is ergonomic, like this, maybe with a little more attention to the top band, but also to have good tuning. That would be so nice, and there's so much room in the market for a truly exceptional closed back, but nobody seems to be making it. At least not until you get into really expensive ranges where you have things like the Focal Batiste, the Radiance, uh, the Aeon Noir, the E3, but not in this price range. You either get comfort or you get sound, and it's kind of hard to find both. Anyway, I'm going down a tangent. Let's talk about frequency response and objective sound. Now, this was measured on the Brulin Care 4128C. This is compensated to diffuse field for that rig. And the gray area here is the scope of average listener preference. Now, the Harman target would be something that is roughly along the center of this region. But some people prefer more treble, some people prefer less treble, and the same thing goes for bass. As you can see, these have a lot of bass. And they actually do have extended sub bass, but that mid bass, that 100, 200 hertz, it is so elevated that the sub bass just doesn't come through. It's all just boomy, bloaty, sloppy lower mids. It doesn't feel punchy. It doesn't feel tactile. It just feels mushy. Compared to that, the 600 hertz to 1.3 kilohertz range feels very recessed. So vocals are a bit scooped. We elevate back up, peaking at around 2.2K, which makes a little bit shouty sometimes. We go back down, getting darker near four kilohertz, and then elevate back up around 8K. And then again, it drops back off after that like a stone. <sighs> I recently did a video about the Sony MDR-Z7 Mark II talking about how the treble was a bit erratic, and how generally speaking, I don't find people preferring treble that dips to the bottom and the top and the bottom and the top of the average listener preference window. Now, again, some people will want a little more treble than the average. Some people will want less treble than the average, and that's why that whole window is there. But what are the odds of a person wanting the lowest and highest amounts of that range back to back throughout the entire upper mid range and treble range? It seems very, very unlikely that this would match the preferences of the average listener. Maybe someone, and a lot of it does still fall within that range, at least from like uh, 1.5K up, a good bit of it falls into that range. But overall, it's just not great. Again, I think it's embarrassing to say that this has a accurate and relevant sound. It's kind of like a headphone that would have claimed to be accurate that was made, I don't know, 35 years ago, and even then they were making better headphones 35 years ago. Now again, is someone gonna like this? Yes, but Harmonic Dine, guys, tell people what it is. 
tell people this is a very boomy headphone that's focused on the lower mid range. And then the people that are buying it will know exactly what they're getting into. Now you can cover up some of these events and you can get that bass to come back down to reasonable levels, but then you have to deal with the messy treble and it's just not worth it. I spent some time trying to modify this headphone and it's just not worth it basically summarizes the entirety of my thoughts on this purchase as a whole. If you care about balanced sound, if you're really into audio, this isn't a direction I would go. I would look at other things. If you want something that is really cheap, check out the K361. It's in a similar price range. Or the MDR7506 from Sony with the ST pads on it, the deluxe pads. Or the CD900 ST with the Yaxi ST Pad 2 if you want something that's a bit more diffuse field tuned. There's good options out there. This is not one of them. Just on cue, it is starting to rain outside, so I think I'm going to wrap up filming. Guys, if you like this video, leave a like down below. Comment, let me know what you want to see in the future. If you want to get active in the community, you can have the Discord or the forum, both available at the link in the video description. As always, don't forget to stick around and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Till next one, guys. Peace.